Hey guys, it's going to be Dilmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I'm really appreciate it. And today I'm going to be showing you how we can add what's called a reference point to Unity using AR Foundation. So what is a reference point? Why would you use it? So if you have watched my videos previously, I shown you how to add components either by using a cloud point or by using a plane that was detected. And you can also add something called a reference point. So the if I go to the documentation on Unity, a reference point is basically a particular point in a space, and this is the part that I'm reading, that you're asking the device to track. Basically, if we want to put a reference point on a wall that gets detected, or if we detect a table by using the cloud point manager, and we want to place a reference point, we can basically place a reference point and then Unity is going to keep track of that reference point. So why is that useful? So it's really useful because not all the time you want to place an object at a specific position, but you not, not only that, but you also want to, you know, be able to have flexibility of placing a reference point yourself. So if you want to add a reference point, if you want to remove it, you know, it, that it comes really powerful also with image tracking. If you want the image tracker to keep track of the you know reference point you can do that as well so let me go ahead and show you what we're going to be doing so right now what you're looking at is just a bunch of assets and props that i am going to be using to place in a basically in a wall and also on the on the floor so i'm just going to be you know selecting them randomly and then based on the location where we place it either on a plane that is uh, horizontal or vertically that's basically what we're going to use to to play so these assets are also provided by cnt studios they were kind to provide them to me and I'm, I'm also going to you know show show them to you so if you want to download them i'm going to put the asset in the description of this video these are the assets and they're called simple props this one includes the items and the icons and also it's called a cartoon asset so I'll put the links in the description of this video and you can download it as well. But just keep in mind that the final push that I'm gonna do to GitHub is not going to include these assets because these assets are paid, so it wouldn't be fair for me to do that because people need to buy them. So I'm going to be modifying this example a little bit just to do spheres or cubes, but you can also, you know, you're more than welcome to use the script that I'm gonna be providing to you. It's just that it's not gonna have the final assets. So so now that you have seen some of these assets, I'm going to go back and start working on a scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be creating a new scene from scratch. I, I haven't been doing that lately and that's because I have a lot of examples, but I think it's time for me to start creating things from scratch so you can see you know, what I'm doing. So this one, I'm just gonna call it reference. We can just call it reference points. Or we could do yeah, for items, I think that's fine. Reference points for items. So let's just double click on it. And it's just gonna be, you know, there's nothing on it. So I'm going to delete the main camera because we're gonna be adding a different component. I'm going to right click on the hierarchy and you've seen me done the, do this, you know, many times. So just, you know, more of a refresher. I'm gonna click on the air session to add the air session and then I'm gonna go back to XR and then add my session origin, which is going to include the camera. And yeah, so that this is basically the, the basic setup. So now that we have that, I'm also going to be adding a canvas, just, you know, to keep track of, you know, any, any kind of information that we want to display. So, and then let me just click on 2D here, and then this is gonna be our canvas. And the next thing that I'm gonna do for now Let's just go ahead and add a label to the canvas. Well, it's actually called a text box and or also called text. And I'm just gonna make it white. And this is just gonna be, you know, a count on how many items we're adding in AR. So let me go ahead and let's just go in a little bit more. I'm just gonna resize it a little bit. And then yeah, we can do something like that. And right about there. Awesome, and then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a, let's go ahead and create another UI component. It's going to do a panel, and let's just go ahead and move it up. And then this panel is just gonna have uh, an image beneath it. The reason why I wanna do this is because I want to see the 
I want to see the text, and if I don't do this, it's going to be really hard to see it. So this one is just going to be the background. And there are many ways to do this. This is just one way that we can we can just do. Okay, I think that's fine, and this is going to be reference. Let me just use, there we go, let me just use capital. Reference point count. Just a templating. I, I like to use the brackets. And because it you know it tells me that it's gonna be a variable and then let me just make this a little bigger and let me just center this and what we can call this let's just call it reference point count there we go and then I'm gonna make the background a little bit darker and let's just do something something like that works okay so that's gonna keep track of the things that we're adding on the screen let me go ahead and I'm just going to center this a little bit more. Okay, and let, let me make sure that this is not set to stretch. I'm going to set it to be actually on the bottom. Let, let me also do that on this one. So that's going to be the anchor position. And then what I'll do, I'll just move these two down, something like that, right about there. I don't want to do it too, you know, too far because the, the iPhone XS that I have has rounded corners. So I want to make sure that I keep, let me make the font about 40. Okay, I think that I think that works. All right, so now we can start with, you know, adding some of the components. So the, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to need to add a couple of managers. So the first one that we're going to be needing, it's going to be the plane manager. The reason why I need a plane manager is because I want to detect the floor and also the walls. And the reason for that is because I want to make sure that I can hit something. So you can use either the, the AR Plane Manager or you can use the also the Cloud, the AR Point Cloud Manager. It just depends on what you want to use. I think for what I need right now, we can just do the Plane Manager. And then it's going to tell us that we're going to need a prefab. I already have a prefab for that. And it's actually, I think it's, oh yeah, it's the AR Plane Visualizer. And all it is is just a particle system so that we know where we are pointing. Let me go ahead and make sure that that is accurate. Oh yeah, so all it is is just basically a line render with a mesh on it. The particle system is the the cloud point, the AR cloud points. If you click on it, you're gonna see there's a particle system. So yeah, let me avoid confusing you right now because there's gonna be a lot of pieces. So this one, we're just gonna add the AR plane visualizer. I'm going to do uh, basically everything. We're gonna do horizontal and vertical detection, so that's fine. So the other thing that I'm going to need also is I'm going to need a Raycast Manager. So let me just go ahead and add that. The reason because we need that is because I need to do a Raycast in Augmented Reality. So we need that component. And then the other thing that we're going to need is going to be the AR Reference Point Manager that is going to tell us basically, it's going to allow us to create a uh, what's called a reference point anywhere where the, the plane gets detected. So if you notice, this is basically requiring that we pass in a reference point prefab. I am going to select one of the ones that we have here. So let me go ahead and go back to the demo. And let me see what we have. And let's see what we can select. I'm just going to select one and then we can use that one for the example. So we can either do basically a radio or a taco or a pizza. I think I'm going to use use the radio, I think the radio, so it's called the items, I'm just going to copy it, that way I can remember what it is, and then we can go back into our scene, which we call reference point for items, and I'm just going to paste it here, and what I'll do here is we can go back into, so, so this can be just basically one of the prefabs that I have, and, and that's actually what's going to be when I, when I check this code in into the repository in GitHub, you're going to end up with a place object associated with the reference point. For this demo, just because I want I want people to see what Synthi Studio, how it looks like, I'm going to be referencing this. So let me go back into the prefabs, and this one is called Items Boombox. So let me go ahead and find that, and that one is here, so it's gonna reference that one. And let me make sure that this prefab is, so this prefab is gonna be huge and I need to make sure that I'm doing meters. So what I'm going to do for this one is let me go ahead and let me go into the actual prefab. And so you're going to have to do this anyways if you need to, 
because you're going to need to resize it. Make sure that you're doing doing a lot smaller. So I'm just going to do 0 0.1 and then 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go on the prefab. And then what I'll do here, see how it's already, so that's already applied. Then what I'll do is I'll go back into my AR session origin and then associate this back. I guess it was already associated. And yep, I think that that's going to work just fine. Okay, so we have a AR plane manager, we have a AR raycast manager. So we're getting ready, we're basically ready to create a script. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. So this is going to be the one that is doing most of the work. So I'm just going to go into my script folders and I'm going to create a new script. This one is just going to be a C sharp script. And then this one is going to be my reference. Let's just call this one reference point manager. And now what I'm going to do is associate it with the AR session origin. Let me make sure that it does compile. And there we go. And then I'll just double click it. And what I'll do, and I always do this on every video, click on Assets, Open C Sharp Project. And I do that just so that everything recompiles and basically it's, it's cleaner that way. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to store the, one, one of them is going to be the Raycast Manager that we just added. The reason why I need to do that is because I need to do a Raycast, so I'm going to need to do that. So let me go ahead and remove this method. So I'm just going to do a private, and then I'm also going to need to do Raycast, AR Raycast Manager. And let me make sure that I bring that in. That's so going to say that it can't find it. That's OK. We'll just do AR Raycast, Raycast Manager. And then I'll just click here to bring it in. And let me make sure that I have it, that I have it typed correctly. And I do have it typed correctly, but for some reason, let me make sure that it, oh there we go just took some time okay so then the next thing that you're going to need as well is going to be the ar reference point manager and let me make sure that i can type there we go ar reference point manager and then it's going to make this one lowercase also this one lowercase okay so we have the two managers i'm also going to need to add i don't think did i add it the i did at the ar play manager Let's add that one as well. So it's going to be AR playing manager, AR playing manager. OK, and let's make sure that we don't capitalize the first letter. And then the last thing that I'm going to need is going to be another another list. So this list is going to be basically a list of reference points because I want to keep track of all the reference points that I'm adding. So it's going to be an AR reference point, and then we can just call it we can just call it reference points. I think that's fine. And then when this initializes, I just want to create a, a list. So I'm just going to create a list in line. Awesome. So the other thing that I also want this script to have is I want to add a require component. Because I want to make sure that every time you guys add this script, it's going to add all the components that I have in here. So I'm just going to do just gonna do that for every single one of these. So I need to do this one. And just copy it. And I also want to require this component. And there we go. And you can remove them if you don't need any in your own. But what's going to happen if you add the script, it's going to add the dependencies automatically for you. So I think that's, those are all the dependencies. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is just going to be a private a static. And this is going to be a list of AR, AR Raycast hits that we're going to need to track. And we don't really need to track it, but the system is going to be populating them for us. And I'll show you how this works. So it's going to do a new list. OK, so I think so far so good. Let me just remove this comment. So now that we have that information in, in here, we're going to need to actually store the references. So right now, these are just null. So we need to go ahead and call awake. And let me make sure that I don't have the word private. I just like it short. And then what I'll do here is I'll just say AR Raycast Manager, get component, AR Raycast Manager. And then I'll do the same thing with basically three of them. I'm going to need to do it with this point manager and also the, the plane. I'll just go ahead and change the variable here, plane manager, and also the, actually this one is the AR Reference Manager. Basically getting all those, all those components at it. Okay, I think we have everything we need so far. 
So, so now that we have those added, we're going to need to be checking for touch events because right now all we have is just references. So now we need to find out, okay, if the user touching, basically touching the screen. So I'm just going to do a check here on the input. And then we're going to say touch count. So I'm just noticing that this is really small. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see it better. And then I'm going to also hide the hierarchy on the right, on the left. Okay, so I'm just going to say if input touch, and this is going to be the touch count is equal equals zero, then I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to return. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to store the touch. So I'm going to need to do a touch. And then this is just going to be the touch equal input that get touch. And I know it's not fun to, to watch me code, but it's going to be worth it once we get it all working. So it's going to say touch begin. So we're just going to check for the touch face. So if it doesn't equal the touch face begin, we're going to return. The reason why, why we need to do this is because I only want to do this on, just when we start touching. So if you're moving and the touch face is move, I don't want to add another component. I just want to do it at the beginning of the touch. That's when we add one of the components to the as a reference point. And then if the state changes, then we don't add anything. It's just going to be on the begin. Perfect. So now the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to also actually do a raycast. So you notice here I have a raycast manager, and which is this one right here. So we're going to do a check for that. So we're going to say AR raycast manager, raycast, and I'm going to get the touch position. We're also going to get, we're going to pass in the hits. So this is going to be an out variable, which means that it's going to get populated as we pass it in. And then what I'll do is I'm going to have to tell it what the trackable the trackable type is. So it's going to say trackable type. And instead of doing it this way, which is going to be fully qualified, I'm just going to do this. And then we can just bring in the subsystems namespace, which is the one that I just got at it, which is this one right here. So the way that the AR, AR Raycast Manager works is you can do basically Raycast in AR to different types. You can do, do it for everything. You can do it for the face. You can do it for a feature point, which is going to be for the cloud. When you do a cloud point type of detection, you can do it for image tracking. And then, you know, there's there's multiple of them. I'm going to do it for plane within Polygon because we're going to do basically do it on planes, either on the floor or walls. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to need to... So at this point, we know that we have hit a component that is going to be a plane within a Polygon. So we're going to have to store basically the post. So I'm just going to say post. And then it's going to be the hit post. And then I'm just going to get the list of hits. And then I'm just going to get the first one, which is going to be at index 0. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, OK, I, now that I have a hit post and I know that I'm detecting a collision, I'm going to create a new reference point. So this is where we're starting to get into what this video was going to be about. So in this case, what I'm going to do, and I need to make sure that I do AR, we're going to do an AR reference point, and then it's going to call a reference point equal. So we don't, we're not going to say new because that's not how this works. We're actually going to use the AR ref reference point manager to create a new reference point. So it's going to say add reference point, and then this is going to tell us to pass in basically a post. So it's going to say that we're going to do, we're going to create a reference point at the position that we're hitting. Awesome. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that the reference point got created correctly. So I'm just going to check, OK, if it equals to null. Then what I'll do is I'll just say, you know, there was an error. So we can just say there was an error creating a reference point. And then otherwise, if it's not null, then what I'm going to say is I'm going to add it to my list. So if you remember, we added a list of reference points, which is called reference points. So we're just going to access that list. So I'm just going to say reference points that add. And then I'm going to add my reference point that I just that I just created. OK, so I think that that's everything that we need to do at this point. So a couple of things that I want to do personally is I want to go back into my canvas. And let me see what I'm displaying, because I want to make sure that we get enough information to find out what we're doing. 
So one thing it's gonna be this. The the other thing that I also want to add, and what something that gives us login information. Just if something, you know, if so, if we have an e an issue of, for some reason, then we know what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that to the. Let's go ahead and add it to the very the very top. I'm losing my voice, guys. Sorry. And I'm just gonna let's just make it a little bigger here. We can probably do something like that, and then I'll just say background. This one can be or debug log. Awesome. And then I'll just make it I'll just make it bigger, and then this can actually start from the top, and then we'll just give it a little bit of padding on uh, on all areas so that it doesn't look so it doesn't look bad, and then something like that works. And then we can probably just do the same thing on this one. Actually, that one it's fine. I think I think we're okay. So for this one, I'm going to let's go ahead and change the font to be something like 30. Doesn't need to be. And then this is gonna be our log. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remove that. And then we can actually remove this as well. I don't want to see any text when this shows. Okay, so I think we're good there. We're good here. And then now what I'll do is I'll add a couple couple of things. So one thing that I'm gonna add is gonna be a text. And this one is going to be for my debug log. And let me make sure that I'm adding the namespace, which is Unity Engine UI. And then because this one is going to be exposed, I tend to like to add those at the very top. So we're going to add it there. And this one is going to be a serializable field. And let's just copy this, paste it. And then this one is going to be my reference point count. Awesome. All right, so I know my reference point count is going to be increment as I add them to this list. So what I'll do here is I'll just say my text is going to be, I'll just say reference point count, and then we can just do column, and then we can just grab the, basically the count from here. Count, there we go. That's gonna give us our count every time we add a new reference point. So, and then the other thing that I wanna do as well is on my debug log is not only do this, but also display it. So in fact, we don't need to do this because we're never gonna see that unless we're running in the in the debugger or we're running in Xcode and, we're, and we have the device attached. So we we can leave it. I think I think that's fine. We can just make it a variable. We can just say error entry, and we can just paste that. And then what I'll do here is I'll just do that so that we keep adding the the error every time it happens. And then I'll just add the variable here. Perfect. And let me just go ahead and remove all these curly braces because these are these are all just single lines. Just makes it cleaner. Okay, so I think I think we got everything so far that we need. So another thing that I want to do is add a way for us to toggle the airplanes from showing. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to see the items that we're placing in a clean way. I don't want to see all the plane detection stuff in there. So let me let me add something else as well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the canvas and we can add a new button. So I'm just going to say UI and then button. And then what we can do is we can just make it a little bit bigger so we can actually select it. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy one from a previous scene because I know those ones are sized correctly. Let me just copy this one. And then let's get back into our scene here. And then I'll just paste this one and we'll just rename it. This is going to be toggle plane detection. Okay, so and then what we'll do is we'll just put this one. We can just put this one right here or maybe in the middle. Let's go ahead and do the middle. And then I'll change the anchor to be on the bottom. Okay, so I think just debating whether to put this one on the bottom or okay, let's just do let's just do it right there. I think that's fine. All right, so now that we have that, I need to change the text. This is going to be AR plane. We're going to start. We're basically going to start with it on. So I want to basically set it to off. So if I press off, it's going to change it to on. So that's going to be basically the toggle. So let's go ahead and set it to off, which means that it's on by default. 
and okay so that's perfect and I believe I already have code for that I don't think we need to we need to create that again so what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be displacement enable and disable so let's go ahead and go into it and then I'll just copy that area and I could I could do it myself but to be honest this is already there so there's no reason for me to recreate it okay so and then what I'll do for that one I'm just going to add it to the very bottom and then we'll just rename this one it's actually AR Plane Manager AR Plane Manager and I'm gonna go back and re rename him rename the previous ones because it's not consistent and then the toggle button it's going to be we call it toggle plane detection button we can we can just call it toggle button I think that's fine you can look at the implementation to find out what it is okay so then on, in here I'm going to add another reference private button and then this is gonna be toggle button and then we'll also serialize it awesome and then I'm going to need to bind to it so it's gonna say actually bind the unclick event and then this one is going to call plane detection toggle plane detection and there we go I think that's what I had on the on the other example let's go ahead and look at it just to make sure I want to make sure this works the first time and we don't need to build it multiple times and yeah so this is what I'm doing exactly what I'm doing on the new one except that I know that it's required so we don't need to check for nulls okay so I have I think I have everything so the way that this works is if, if that we're doing a toggle so we're saying okay if the plane manager is enabled if it's set to true we're gonna set it to false if it's false we're gonna set it to true and then we go through all the trackables that it's already tracking and then it basically deactivates them depending on the state of the plane manager and then this is just a toggle that I have so in fact what I'm gonna do here if the airplane manager set so this is what I'm gonna do for the label let me go back here I keep saying label but it's actually the text and let me just change that and then what I'll do is I'll resize it just a tiny bit so that everything fits and let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger and then we can just change the X value okay disable enable okay so I think we're good as far as that we're checking so just as a summary we we added our UI components we added you know the components for AR that we're gonna need then we're getting reference to to those components that we have in the inspector so that's what we're calling a component then we're binding or toggle button we're checking for input and then we're just doing a ray cast on the on the planes that get detected at the touch position if we get hits then we create a reference point at the position of the hit and then basically we we populate our debug log and then we also populate or reference or reference point list so i think we get everything everything that we need and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and build it and then show you how that looks and then now thinking about this i'm just going to make this one smaller i think it's too big and let me make sure this is going to fit okay in the device that I have which is the actually it's gonna be the it's gonna be the XR and now it's actually the XS okay it looks like it fits just fine we can probably just put some information on the on the actual debug log so just to make sure that it's sized correctly and then we can also do the same thing on this count okay so we're good there and we also are good on this one so let me just go ahead and delete that okay so the other thing that we need to do is we haven't bound or debug log or text boxes and or toggle button so let's go ahead and do that so the can is going to be associated with the count debug log is going to be associated with debug log and then lastly the toggle button is going to be associated so i think we're good then the the only thing that we probably may want to do is also clear the reference points if if they are set but we can do that in another video i think for now i think this is a good start so let's go ahead and click on build and then what i'm going to do is make sure that i add this as an open scene so we have it added and make sure that i don't have it's like i had a, i had the previous scene enabled so that's going to be the only one enabled in this case and then i'm going to make sure that i have development build enabled i'm going to click on my build and i'm going to just basically 
what I'll do is I'll just do reference points and then we can basically do an append on the reference point and yes I want to replace and it's gonna take a few seconds to build so I'll be back as soon as the build is done and then I have it running on my phone alright guys so this finished building and I actually tested on my device so let me show you the results so I added a couple more features I added the clear reference points and also clean up the UI just a little bit so you can see that I'm adding reference points anywhere where we have planes detected so I'm just basically touching different areas and then in here I'm just toggling the the plane plane detection so we don't see all the grids you can see how I can toggle it also the number is incrementing based on how many I'm adding and I'm also clearing them out by pressing the clear reference points but yeah, everything is pretty steady. The, the tracking items are staying in position as I move my phone around. So this is really powerful. Let me just go forward a little bit. I think in this angle it looks really cool. So this one I have plane detection off because I already detect the surfaces so there's really no need to have it on. And then you can see how I can actually press and actually detect the plane to place a reference point. So that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you guys if you guys have any questions about this or anything else feel free to let me know in the comments and also don't forget to check me out on patreon.com and supporting me if you can because it really helps me in bringing you a lot more content and also source code uh no cost so thank you very much guys